Hi, this is Ethan here from MyDrawingTutorials.com and in this video you're going to learn how to use a simple acrylic painting technique to create beautiful abstract art. And it's so easy, anyone can do it, even if you never painted before. So in the last video, we went over how to use a simple color mixing technique that create really cool effects on the canvas. And if you haven't watched it already, you can watch it by clicking on that image right there. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use that very same technique to create a cool abstract painting. For this painting, we're going to be using a 16 by 20 canvas, some painter's tape, a palette knife, blue and red acrylic paint, some acrylic glazing medium, and also have a few clean brushes at the ready. It's not really important what kind of brush they are as long as you can use it to blend. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is take our painter's tape and tape up this canvas uh, taping up the border and dividing it into equal squares. So here's the canvas all taped up. I divided the canvas into a four by three grid. So we have 12 squares total. Each square are four inches by four inches. And this required a little bit of planning because I had to do some calculation in my head with the width and height of the canvas to make sure that all the squares are equal size, they're equally spaced, and the borders are also symmetrical. So if you're using a different size canvas, you're going to have to do some math to make sure that everything is nice and symmetrical and even, but it's well worth the effort because it's going to make the painting look a lot better. Now in case you're using a 16 by 20 canvas like I am, here's what I did. The painter's tape that I used were are one inch wide, and I put a one inch border along the top and along the bottom. Along the two sides, I made the border half an inch thick. Then I simply measure four inches in on each side and put a tape down this way. And then once again, four inches in and put a tape down this way. For the horizontal tape, I also measure four inches down on both uh, top and bottom, lay the tape in, and that makes all the squares four inches by four inches. Now that we have the canvas all prepped, let's talk about the concept for the painting. Here I have a simple sketch that I made out of the, uh, the general concept I had for this abstract art. Uh, because abstract art can be very vague and nebulous, it's a good idea to sketch out your idea on paper, on a scratch paper first, so that you have a general idea of what it looks like and what you need to do, so that when the paint is on the palette, you're not freaking out and running around. So the general concept I had was to have two colors uh, merge with each other. So we have a cool color, which is the blue, and a hot color, which is the red. Sort of like a yin-yang type of thing. And since cool air sink and hot air rises, I put the blue on the top so it could sink down to the red, and the red on the bottom so it could rise up to the blue. The red is going to dominate the bottom part of the painting, and the blue is going to dominate the top. And then as they merge together, they gradually get lighter and intermingle right in the middle here. So that's the idea, but again, abstract painting can be very unpredictable, so we'll see what happens. Okay, I have some red and blue squeezed out on the palette, and the first thing I'm going to do is take my palette knife and load up some red onto it like that, and we'll go over to this bottom square right here. So I'm just going to lay down the paint, and I'm using the knife to sort of plan out the direction of the paint so that we have less work to do when the blending begins. Okay, so I made the red really heavy in this corner here to indicate that's where the source of the paint is coming from. And now I'm going to take my glaze medium and put some glaze right in the space between each of the red paint. And now I'm going to take my brush and blend the paint together. I'm keeping the pressure on my brush very, very light. I'm just letting the weight of the brush do the blending for me because we don't want to over blend it. And we can go ahead and cross the border into the other square a bit so that we have some continuity in our painting. All right, and I'm just going to set this brush aside and this will be my red paint brush. We don't want to mix the paint. And I wipe down my palette knife and we're going to do the same thing with the blue paint for the top corner. And before we put too much paint on there, I want to add a little bit of glaze medium just so that it can 
uh, grease the surface and help the paint blend a lot better. Okay, and we'll take our second brush and blend that out. You can see I'm holding the brush right at the tip here, barely putting any pressure. It's just the weight of the brush is doing the blending. And I'm using sort of a, a wavy line, almost like the paint uh, snaking out, of, out from its sources. And again, go into the other squares to develop some continuity. And here I'm also playing with tilting the, br the brush to the side to let the, uh, the sharp edge of the brush do some painting. And again, set that brush aside and this will be our blue brush. Okay, so going back to the concept sketch for a quick reminder, we're gonna put, make these two square predominantly red and also this square. So we're just gonna fill that in right now. And we want the paint to gradually decrease as it radiates from the source. So we're not gonna put as much paint um, on these squares. And also, we're gonna put the glazing medium on first to grease the canvas and make the paint spread a lot better. When you put the medium on first, the paint will be more translucent and lighter as opposed to when you put the paint on the canvas first, then the paint has time to grip the canvas and it's gonna be a lot darker tone. So I'll, I'll just let the, the medium glaze across the squares. Okay, and now back to the red paint. So you can see I'm already blending it a little bit with my palette knife, playing around with the composition to see what I like. And we'll add some medium onto the square as well. We want to do uh, as many square at the same time as we can so that it creates continuity. And we'll add a little bit more glaze onto these squares. The further out we go from the source, we, we want to add more glaze to paint. You know, we want the glaze to paint ratio to be more towards the glaze side. And that will lighten up the paint. Okay, now we'll take our brush and I really like this look that we made with the palette knife so we're only gonna uh, blend it with the brush a tiny bit. And I want this square here to be predominantly red and this square to be predominantly blue. So I'm gonna go in a little deeper with the red. Okay, and now we'll do the same thing for the blue side. So I really like the pattern that the palette knife is making. So I'm still gonna blend it with my brush, but I'm gonna be very light and I'm gonna only blend around this area and just sort of gradually t taper off and let the uh, palette knife take over. 
And now for the crucial transition area where the red meets the blue. So I said I had I wanted this square to be predominantly blue. Uh, so that that most of that is blue, and I want to add a little blue right here. And let's add some glaze medium to that. We'll almost make like a diagonal with the glaze to because I want that blend to be really subtle. Okay, so that's good for the blue. Now let's switch to the red paint. And at this point, I don't think I'll be using my brush anymore, so I'm just going to put it in a tub of water so that it doesn't dry out and ruin the brush. And I have a little bit of red paint on my palette knife here, and we're just going to try to put some of that into the blue. And at this point, I'm just going to try to make that blue and red merger as seamless as I can. Sort of blend each color into the other's territory. And just for a little bit of highlight, I want to add a little bit of white into this mix, just a tiny bit. And I'm going to try to put it along this diagonal here. So I've got a tiny bit of white and we just want to dab it in here and there to add some visual interest. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. Now let's peel off the tape and see what it looks like. Okay, so that's our painting. So it looks like some of the paint got underneath the tape and uh, got outside the border. I think that was because I, w I took the palette knife, for one. I, a couple of the times when I was painting, the palette knife slipped underneath the tape and that created these things right here. But also because I was going across the square. I think if you cap your brush stroke within one square, it would minimize the spillage. Uh, but fortunately, it happened all over, so it doesn't look like an eyesore. It sort of looked like maybe we meant to do it. I kind of like that chaoticness, uh, so I think I'm going to keep it. But if you want to, you could take some white paint and clean up the edges to make it look a lot neater. So that's our abstract painting. I hope you like it. Play around with your own idea and concept and see what you come up with. If you like this video, please help me out and share it with your friends. You can do so by clicking the like button, adding it to your favorite, or posting this video on Facebook. And don't forget to subscribe to our free newsletter for more art tutorials just like this. You can do so by going to mydrawingtutorials.com forward slash acrylic, or simply click on the link in the description. Well, thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy painting.